It's all you ever hear. Look like this, think like this, be like this. How do you fight it? We start our own radio station. We keep our identity secret. It gives us the power to say what we want as loud as we want. We change the rules around. We've got a different sound. Soon into the underground. Cause when it gets too much, you have no choice. Oh yeah, you gotta make some noise. Are you listening? Are you listening now? We're on the air. You're listening to Radio Free Rock. Did Lily leave me a message? Is she thinking about me? That's so not what I was doing. I wonder if she texted me today. You're an idiot. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I am an idiot with your cell phone. All right, come on, get back to me. Five, four, three, four. <laughs> Mr. Brennan, did you misunderstand the rule about no horseplay in the halls? It's an automatic detention. Horseplay includes all boisterous activities like running, yelling, shoving, and without a doubt, throwing a ball at the principal. But hey, boys will be boys, huh? <laughs> well, listen, I hope you've learned something from our little talk. I know I've enjoyed it. Yes, Mr. Waller, right. I uh, sure enjoyed it, too. <laughs> yes, well, run along. Go. I mean, walk along. <laughs> Nicely handled, Mr. Waller. You have a lovely rapport with your students. Oh, please, Miss Mitchell. Uh, how many times do I have to tell you, call me Danny? Oh, of course. As long as you call me Emily. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. So. What do you think was the author's message in this particular novel? Oh, uh, geeks will inherit the earth? <laughs> well, in a way, yes. The heroes of the chrysalids were just children with limited resources. And what was the secret they had to help them escape their oppressive society? Telepathy. Since they could read each other's minds, they were able to communicate hope and change things. Excellent, Lily. They had the power of their ideas. And without censorship, they had the ultimate freedom of communication. Kind of like Radio Free Roscoe. Good example, Leon. Why? Because even though no one knows who's behind RFR, their message still reaches us. Exactly. And because of that anonymity, the children in the chrysalids, like RFR, have the power to bring about change. That is pure speculation, Ms. Mitchell. Excuse me? Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, I couldn't help it over here, but it, shouldn't you be emphasizing that the um, mind readers in the chrysalids are ultimately murderers? Uh, who are willing to destroy previous civilizations that their own might flourish? I think that's oversimplifying it a bit, Mr. Waller. We were discussing the deeper message. Oh. Last dismissed. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Emily. I, I shouldn't have interrupted your class like that. Maybe it's better if you call me Ms. Mitchell. It's not appropriate for you to question my teaching methods in front of the class. Well, yes, but the way you were promoting RFR... How long ago did you read The Chrysalids, Mr. Waller? Twenty-two years ago. Why don't you reread it? And then we'll talk. The important parts are underlined. Okay, Shady Lane, guess what number I'm thinking of. Um, let me think here. What would you pick? Infinity? Infinity's not even a number. It's a condition. I'm bounded by space, time, or quantity. Guess again. No, we gotta face it, Smog. We just don't have telepathy. You two are done with your little magic trick. I got some news. Oh, move over. Journalist in the house. <laughs> What would you guys say if I knew a guy who had a crush on a girl? Oh, I'd say I've given you way too much love advice already. It's not about me. It's about someone who's a little taller, a little older, uh, wears sensible shoes, likes rules, goes by the name of anyone, anyone? Principal Waller? Waller? Waller's got a crush? What are your sources? How can you be sure? Let me put it to you this way, all right? Today, Waller's in the middle of giving some kid detention when 
a certain female teacher approaches, and all of a sudden he's ruffling the kid's hair, calling him son, and letting him walk. Well, I don't know if that's proof, but it's a good story. Oh, no, no, there's more, there's more. I was watching them all day. I was repulsed, and yet I couldn't turn away. Kind of the way I feel about watching you dance. <sighs> Smog, if you could read my mind, you'd know to cue a song right now so I could dance for my best friend, that's you. So that was your big news? Gossip about Waller? Yeah, sorry, Ray, but we're not interested. No, who was it? Who was it? Spill it. <laughs> Lily, a man's not supposed to sell out another man. Just... <laughs> All right, it was Miss Mitchell. Of course, and that's why he was being so weird confronting Miss Mitchell in English class. See? He's like that kid in the fourth grade who pulls a girl's braids to let her know he likes her. Right, you, you did that to me yesterday. Well, Lily, it was a long time coming. Ha! Oh, that's cool, Mark. Seven words. How many more would you like? Uh, yes, well, a few more. Oh, oh, how's the book coming along? Pretty good, pretty good. Some children with their mind reading, it's, uh, it's frightening, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I know this is going to sound a little peculiar, um, and I don't mean to alarm you, um, but do you ever get the feeling that you are being uh, watched? <laughs> watched by whom? Well, the students, of course. <laughs> Not by me, obviously. Right. I think maybe you're taking the reading too seriously. You know, the students have better things to watch than you and me. And I'm pretty sure there aren't any mind readers here at Roscoe High. Otherwise, they'd all be doing better on their exams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talk to you alone. We are alone. Mike is off, right? Right. Okay. I know this is going to sound strange, but it, it is strange, I assure you. The students are uh, watching me, following my every move, uh, waiting to see what I will do next, and I can't stand it. I guess you haven't heard. What? RFR yesterday. They spilled the beans about your uh, little crush. Crush? That's preposterous. What did they say? What do they know? Relax. They didn't mention any names, well, except yours, of course. But now, everyone wants to see for themselves. Well, this is the last straw. I will not have my privacy invaded, my authority usurped. I, I have a mind to crush RFR once and for all. I'm question mark, and I'm wondering, is there such thing as too much information? Do we really need to know how dangerous the universe is? If small asteroids can't be spotted until weeks before they hit the Earth, then why spoil those last few weeks? If we really knew how higher chances were of being hit, do you honestly think we'd drop everything and cancel classes? RFR, what do you think? Yeah, that, that's scary. They should totally cancel classes. Except then Waller wouldn't have an excuse to hang around Miss Mitchell. Um, okay, uh, thanks for your concern. Next caller. What do you think we should do about our impending doom? Did any of you see how Waller was staring at Miss Mitchell today? It was borderline creepy. 
Okay, uh, I, think I think we're getting a little off topic here. We're talking about the end of the world. If the audience wants to change the subject, I say we go with it. Next caller, you decide. I've got some info on Waller. The people have spoken. I overheard him say something to Miss Mitchell today that's so juicy, you won't believe it. All right, so tell us. It's too big. I'll only tell you if you go off air. Yes, so tell us already. I heard Waller ask Miss Mitchell to meet him at Mickey's at 5.15 tomorrow. You know what that sounds like, don't you? Well, it doesn't sound like a study session, that's for sure. So why'd you want to tell us off air? That stuff is gold. Because if we keep it between us, maybe you can secretly record it and then broadcast it over RFR. Oh, she's a genius. Who are you? <laughs> You are truly frightening, Kim. Thank you, sir. Now, for your part of the deal. To make this work, you're gonna have to ask Miss Mitchell to meet you at Mickey's. I'd prefer not to involve Miss Mitchell if possible. If you're gonna do this, do it right. No, I won't do it. We'll have to go ahead without her. Whatever you say, boss. Good luck ever asking her out. What was that, Kim? I said, good luck ever asking her out. Yes, that's what I thought you said. So, if you think this story's just a metaphor, well, think again. I mean, there are evolutionary evolved super species out there. Mm. You all may not recognize them, but let's just say my doctor thinks I'm pretty special. <clears throat> oh, uh, Miss Mitchell, um, uh, just want to make sure you got this memo. Oh, thank you. Oh, I already got this one this morning. It was in my mailbox, where all my memos usually are. Alrighty then. <clears throat> well, uh, actually, Mr. Waller, since you're here. I have a memo for you. Aw, poor guy. Yeah, he needs some serious help in the flirting department. She hates me, she hates me. He wears the rose of youth upon him. <laughs> Thank you, Shakespeare. Guys, hold on, wait up. We can't go through with Operation Date Bug. If we tape his date and Miss Mitchell here, she'll never give Waller a second chance. Waller doesn't even deserve a first chance. We gotta stick to the plan here. Hey, Waller doesn't deserve to be embarrassed by having his date broadcast in our fire, okay? Oh, I am so glad you said that because I was about to say the exact same thing. If anything, Waller needs our help. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not yours. Come on, guys. You guys are acting like a bunch of babies here. Waller's date is going to be the funniest story of the year, and you know it. If we don't take advantage of a scoop this big, what kind of journalists are we going to be? Journalists? Man, we're not journalists. We just talk about stuff that interests us. And everyone's interested in Waller's date. What is the harm in giving the audience what they want? Ray, we're not doing it, and that's final. We're not doing it, and that's final. Well, maybe you're not, but I am. Yesterday, I asked if there was too much information out there. But then we let too much information sabotage our show. Idle gossip is not what RFR is about. It's none of our business and it has the power to destroy great things. Lighten up. It's not like we were talking about you or anything. That's not the point. We should respect everyone's privacy. Which is why on behalf of RFR, I'd like to make a formal apology for talking about Waller's personal life. But you know what I'm not sorry for? Signing off with this song. You know what? You guys all suck. You know, if you need me, I'll be building my bomb shelter to get away from the asteroids. See ya. Far, far. It's me. I just wanted to say your show was a brilliant deflection. Way to throw Waller off the scent. What are you talking about? If he thinks you guys don't care about the trivial details of his life, he'll never suspect you're bugging his day. You don't get it. We're not going through with the plan. Everything we said on air was sincere. Sure it was. I hear you. Loud and clear. Wow, did you go to evil school or something? 
I heard it existed, but I could never get my hands on the course calendar. I'll show you some other time. I gotta go. What was that all about? Didn't you hear the ringing? That was me. I thought I knew who it was, so I called Cougar Radio. Oh, why didn't we think of that? Who but Kim could be so evil? Why would Kim try to set up Wallet? Unless she's not setting him up. She's setting us up. It's a good thing none of us are sleazy enough to have gone through with it anyway. No suspicious characters. No wiretaps. Oh. You're not going to hear anything this time. Now I've got you! <coughs> Mr. Waller, I... Jeez, you know... If you wanted to listen, all you had to do was ask me. Sheesh. Bad news, guys. Tape recorder's gone. Oh, he's going through with it. He's turned off his cell phone. <laughs> he's still rapping on his answering machine. Okay, maybe there's a way I can send him a telepathic message. <clears throat> don't do it, Ray, don't do it. I'm gonna have to go to Mickey's and stop it. It's a trap, we'll get caught. Then that's a risk we'll have to take. With me. Emily. Oh, hi there, Danny. What on earth are you doing here? Shopping for a new snowboard? <laughs> what do you think? I'm buying CDs. Want to see what I'm getting? Uh, you know, music is such a private thing. It really should be enjoyed in the, the privacy of your own home, where you uh, might go, uh, don't you think? Not really. I always thought music was for sharing. Emily, I, I just don't think that right now is a good time to uh, sit. Are you asking me to leave? No, no, no. It's just that your, um, chair is uh, dirty and your dress is so clean and not dirty and why don't you um, show me those CDs? concert just after the blackout. <laughs> Remember how hot it was? There was no air conditioning and all the ice cream in town had melted and... Danny, have you heard a single word I've said? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little preoccupied with something. Well, why don't you talk to me about it? Maybe it'll help. Okay, if I do, you have to promise not to get mad. Promise? What is it? Okay, the thing is, I've set a trap to catch those miscreants at Radio Free Roscoe. A trap? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, and um, uh, any minute now, one of them's going to be here to try and record a date that uh, I'm supposed to be on with you. Uh, for this to be a real date, wouldn't you have had to actually ask me first? Yes, well, that wasn't going to happen. Oh, so you were never going to ask me out? Well, no, no. The, the, the truth is that I, I, I really felt that I needed to, to get rid of uh, that slanderous RFR once and for all in order for that to happen. Danny, we're adults. We shouldn't care what a few kids say. Well, also, I was, I was afraid that if I did ask you, you would say no. You never know unless you try. Maybe. But still, even if I did ask you and then we went out, what if you changed your mind? You're getting ahead of yourself, Danny. I just, I just want to do things right. You know, your um, trap is kind of mean. You're kind of sweet. Ooh. <laughs> you know, Emily, why don't we get out of here? What about your cunning trap? I'd rather take you to dinner. Oh, we're too late. Oh, poor Ray. I wonder what Waller's doing to him right now. Poor Ray. What about poor us? Guys, this is the end of RFR. What, do you really think Ray's gonna rat out in all of us? Not on purpose. He was stupid enough to get busted, wasn't he? If I was so stupid, then how would I know that you'd all end up here griping about me? <laughs> Ray, you're okay. What happened to you? We were so worried. We knew you wouldn't get caught. So how'd you figure out it was a trap, anyway? 
Duh, I'm a mind reader. Yes, it worked. Ray, I knew we had a special connection. Okay, but seriously, how'd you get away with taping the date and not getting caught? Come on, guys. Did you honestly think that I'd ruin Waller's date and ruin his one chance of romance? They just seem so cute together. Cute? How cute? Like, what were they doing that was so cute? <laughs> Lily, 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 shame on you. Knowing you, you just spread it around as gossip. Therefore, I cannot divulge the magic moment. Ooh. But it might have gone a little something like that. I always hoped that when I grew up, the little things in life would be made that much easier. Or different, at least, but I'm starting to wonder if there's any difference at all. Am I interrupting something? Oh, no, 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 I was just, uh, I was just scanning the dial. Turn it back on. I think it's charming. Maybe you're opening your mind a little. I'd like to dedicate this next song to Principal Waller, who, believe it or not, it's not so different from you and me. Take it away, Shady. I want you to understand There's more to what I've said So won't you take my hand And see what's in my head And it's all you and me And you and me You and me And you and me Don't you see? Waller can't do anything right It's all 